fancy hearts and neon lights The playing with my mind Gotta get out of here tonight Oh, I wanna run off I am flawed And I'll tell myself it's fine to be alone Just to find somewhere that finally feels like home Oh, oh, oh I hate all this overthinking Oh, 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 oh The more I swim, the more I'm singing There are 5,040 different orders you can shoot these balls in. Your job is to choose the best order, and then there's an 8-ball, which you have to shoot last. There are only 720 different orders to shoot these solid balls. Your job is to choose the right order, and then there's the 8-ball, which we must shoot last. So if we look at all the balls, including the cue ball on the table, it would be normal to assume that we're taking the solids, right? No, that's wrong. We're taking the stripes. Because this pool thing ain't for normal people. Dictating the whole entire pattern is the placement of the cue ball, the placement of your opponent's balls, and the placement of your own balls. So, which balls are interfering with the shot line? Which balls are in the way of which chosen shots? And what's the easiest way to maneuver around and just kind of try to avoid that whole scenario? And on this particular table, we have some very strange issues. Look how all the stripes are downtown. There's not a single stripe uptown. This entire game, we're going to be moving the cue ball around downtown, the bottom half of the pool table. Which makes the whole game really seem like we're playing straight pool and we're not playing eight ball at all. In straight pool, you're always moving the cue ball in these tiny little spaces to shoot relatively easy almost straight in shots over and over and over so the question comes is anything really easy on the pool table as we get down to the last four stripes there's an issue happening here that you might not otherwise catch if i don't say anything so for the sake of sharing this information with you and hoping that somewhere along the line you use it i'm gonna point it out and the 13, the 9, the 14, and the 15 are gone, and, and we get right here. And now I'm using the 10 ball for the key ball to get on the 8. And I want to be on this 30 degree angle on the 10, so I can just use the left hand side round bounce off and get on the 8. Well, but we wind up here, and what happened is I went way too long on the 12 ball, and I wanted this angle right here to just draw up and back of the 11 for this angle to bounce off the rail and come back for the 10. But I get right here, and because I'm too straight in, I can't bounce hard enough off the right-hand side rail to get right on the 12 ball. So I could still try it, but instead of doing that, I make the bad decision of going into traffic and going two rails and back out to get the right angle on the 11 ball. Is that the right way to do it? Well, the right way to do it is not to get bad on the 12 ball. So there's a lesson in here, and, and it is, and the lesson is just setting this 15 back up and getting right on the 12. And not leaving the table until I'm consistently getting right on the 12. I had to take a chance and it was really unnecessary to take. But I did it. We got out of the rack. We won the game. So you should make some kind of note on it. And, and the best notes are in your cell phone program. But if you need a piece of paper and a pencil, if you have a camera, that's, that's the best way to do it. I need to go back. And if you do it too, you need to go back and work on your position on the 12 from the 15 ball. Right, let's go ahead and play the loop back. And by the way, there's another rack coming up right after this one because I was shooting for a seven pack and I didn't even hit a two pack. Um, but I felt it coming. I felt good and I thought I could do it. I didn't. And, you know, it's just part of life. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Peace.